Welcome to another episode of Unplugged Urban. This week we are coming to you from atop Gresham Bluff. Butte. Gresham Butte. It's beautiful up here. It is really pretty. It is Labor Day, so happy Labor Day. We've had a busy weekend uh, destroying our backyard. Very and we're gonna, sore. We're going to show and you. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll see a picture of that later. <laughs> it's a pre tan. I'm not it's tan way yet. past it's, pre tan. It's preparation. Babe. It's preparation for being tan. Hmm. And some people, you know, fall's coming and uh, people are, their tans are going to fade. Mine's still going to be going strong. No, it's like when you cook chicken in the oven and then you turn the oven off because you think I'll just leave it in there a little bit longer and then you forget to take it out completely until two days later and then it's all shriveled up and nasty. Exactly. Not that you're shriveled up and nasty, but it's it's bad. Thank you for the distinction. I appreciate that. <laughs> Well, this weekend what we did is uh, we cleared a bunch of concrete so that we could uh, put in more garden space because yes. we want to, our goal is to grow as much food as we possibly can. Uh, knowing where your food comes from is really important and if you're making it yourself, uh, this is a great life hack because not only do you know where it's coming from, uh, it's healthy because you grew it. Uh, it's affordable. It's much less expensive than um, if you buy it from the grocery store, especially anything marked organic nowadays is very expensive. It's readily available. You just walk out and yep. cut some kale. Saves money on refrigeration because you can leave it in there until you're ready to eat it. And um, it's simple to do. Mm -hmm. Now this week was very simple. Um, it just was a lot of work. In theory, it was simple. <laughs> we tore out a third of the pad of our backyard and uh, broke that concrete up. We're gonna actually recycle that concrete. I found a place to uh, take the concrete where they'll crush it and make it into new concrete. Um, it's important when you're doing big projects like this to know what you're gonna do with the disposed material. Can you reuse it? Um, turns out concrete you really can't reuse unless you crush it and make it into more concrete. Which we were getting rid of concrete, so we really don't want it. Yeah. So they'll take it for free. So all we have to do is either find a friend with a truck or rent a truck for the weekend and we're good to go. So you'll see that in another episode, but what we're going to do right now is we're going to show you us ripping out a whole lot of concrete. <laughs> Moving men. Breaking up concrete makes you hungry. <laughs> Very hungry. So, how many steps does your ring think you have? Yeah, the the one I have a ring that tracks my uh, heart rate and exercise, but apparently, the, I'll need to let Motive know the makers uh, <laughs> of it that it, it's not very accurate while using a jackhammer. Boop, 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 yeah, boop, boop. It, it gave me I think eighteen thousand steps. <laughs> I, I did I did play racquetball this morning, but I think it was only about 3,000 when I left racquetball, so. <laughs> well, we all got cleaned up. 
Yes. Because that was messy. That was a lot of work. I think we should get some ice cream. Yes. Frozen yeah. yogurt at Frenzy. Ben With gets the, the big, big container. Cookie dough, cupcake bites, mochi, cause duh. Then fish eggs, then there was whipped cream and a cherry on top. Real fish eggs? No. Oh. Is there any frozen yogurt in there? There's frozen yogurt in the bottom. A little somewhere. tiny bit? Yeah. yeah. Strawberry. That's the strawberry. Our life hack this weekend is uh, to think about how you, how you get food and uh, where it comes from. So when you're growing your own food, you know exactly where it comes from. You know everything that's going into it. When you get it from a grocery store, I, I read um, an article this week that said the average meal in the United States travels 1,500 miles to get to your plate because you think of all the different things that go into it. And when you walk into a grocery store, it's it's not on, you know, we would think it'd be really weird if there weren't bananas, but there aren't any bananas in the winter in season in Portland. There's no bananas in the Northwest. <laughs> right, so ever, so, but, They're but all we, have imported. This, we have this crazy expectation that any food that we can think of that we should have in a grocery store should just be there all the all time. All the time. And the reason that happens, and it's not a bad thing, it's great to have variety, but you gotta think about the climate impact. So, you know, when you're buying that fruit that's not grown in your area, that means it had to travel, that means you're emitting carbon just to get it to the grocery store. So, one of the best parts of growing your own food um, in your climate is that that food has zero carbon footprint. If anything, it's removing carbon because it's uh, absorbing CO2 just, just to grow. So um, we want to try to, um, you know, obviously our, our life hacks are to be healthy. So it's good for us because we know exactly where the food comes from. Okay. Affordable, hopefully it's going to reduce our grocery budget. Um, and then clean for the environment. We're not uh, we're not trucking a whole bunch of food from foreign places to get to us so that we can have a great variety. Now we still are gonna buy some variety of food, but maybe less and, and simple. And um, this build was very simple. That's why we didn't film a ton of it. Cause you know, we basically just broke up. Concrete, <laughs> concrete all day. All day. <laughs> I think our neighbors would be very like, happy we're not, we returned the jackhammer it's like today. like the chain gang out there. <laughs> I'm like, I'm never committing a felony. I don't want to do this for a living. Oh, yeah. oh and <laughs> telling Ben, make sure you do your schoolwork. Yeah, we, we <laughs> so you're ben, not, you don't have to just do like, manual labor. I don't think manual labor is your thing, buddy. I mean, he did a great job today, but it was a lot. Was it tough? Yes. <laughs> was it worth the ice cream? No. <laughs> no, it was so much work. Yeah, it's a lot of you work. You did great huh? work, though. All right, well, we're gonna uh, walk back to the house, probably take a nap. We'll, well see a you nap guys before we go to bed. Before we go to bed, <laughs> crash on the we'll couch. We'll see you guys tomorrow cleaning up the backyard. Where'd she go? She going to get her coffee? Yeah. Okay. You sore? Yes. Yeah. Just my hands. Everything yeah. else is good. My hands are sore. Well, oh. we need to get a picture of your back. Okay, I got a little bit of sun yesterday. Just a little. He was not red. He was like dark umber brown. It was weird. Very, very red. About three quarters of the way through, <laughs> cutting up all the concrete, I could feel it. Yeah. And at that point, I was just like, "We're gonna get this done. I am not stopping. We're just gonna get this done. I don't, I don't care if I get burned." Well, you're already burnt, so. Yeah. At that point, I was like, "Finish it up. Let's go." Yeah. So we wanted to share another life hack with a few this morning <laughs> that you thought of. Yeah. Bring your own cup to Starbucks, and you can still have it say Starbucks. Eh? Yeah, but see, the pro Starbucks? no oh. problem with mine is I get a vente, and this only fits a grande, so I was a little. Underwhelmed today. Thank goodness you don't get a Trente. Then we really. Be I couldn't trouble. carry that cup. Yeah. <laughs> so, so now I need to bring my bigger cup. 
we're gonna try when we go on our walks we just finished our sunday morning walk uh that ends up at starbucks even though it says red robin behind us we just like sitting over at red robin that's next to the starbucks <laughs> it's kind of complicated seating's better here i'll just say that uh but uh, i think we're gonna bring our cups from now on and uh it's the a only little problem thing. is we can't pre-order so we have to come order and wait. It's, you know, those first world Figure problems. it out, Starbucks. Put it in the app. I'm pre-ordering. So then they can, like, have it all ready to just pour into your cup in a reusable cup. I asked they, them. They couldn't quite they figure can't. that one it's out. It's too comp. The science yes. behind it is too much. <laughs> it's too much, people. But anyway, uh, I figure what we go on 52 walks a year. That's 104 cups. So there's 104 last cups that are not going into a landfill or well we usually try to recycle them but even yeah. still it's cost of recycling uh and uh so you know life hacks a lot of times you don't have to do anything big you don't have to tear up your whole backyard like we did you can yes our daughter is still to. not yeah. thrilled and he's not happy about that well you posted on facebook yesterday a yeah picture a picture of it. of it and then she what did she say she said why <laughs> that's all we got so yeah so life hacks can be simple things. They don't have to be complicated. Um, and it's, it's, I think it's the repetition that's the bigger thing. Like yeah. if you do something that's good for the environment, good for you, you know, do something. You <coughs> Sorry, there's a pigeon over there and Minnie <laughs> is having none of it. <coughs> hey, it's okay. It's just a pigeon. It's like a rat with wings. Anyway, uh, life hacks don't have to be big and, and huge projects. It can be simple things. And the key is like how often and how regularly you do it. So uh, for us, you know, tearing up our backyard so we can make our own food all year round, that's got a big step to it. But for us to bring our coffee cups every day to Starbucks when we go, that's not a big step. And it makes a big difference too. So think about that. This afternoon, we are going to try to move all the concrete out of uh, the, the new garden. And we're gonna put some weed cloth down. And that's probably what we're gonna call it for the week because this is a pretty big project. So this will hop over into another, uh, another build. A but, few more. Uh, maybe a few more, yeah. Um, but it's really nice to have done. It's yeah. nice to have uh, the weed cloth down, ready to go. Our next step, next week, we're gonna be getting rid of the concrete and hopefully getting some pea gravel in, making some more, uh, I don't know if we'll get to making more planter boxes right away, but eventually we're gonna make more planter boxes and we're gonna start getting ready for our fall and winter garden. So we wanna give you a cost breakdown. Uh, we make sure that anytime we do a project, you know how much it costs. Um, really our only cost this weekend uh, we had a lot of the tools like the rake and shovels and all that kind of stuff did have to rent the jackhammer uh, 65 bucks for
for four hours. Mm -hmm. We busted that out pretty fast with the help of Danielle and Ben. It's good if you're gonna jackhammer to have a couple other people moving the uh, the broken debris up. Debris away. Yeah, yeah. exactly, because every time that you start getting that debris piled up, you, you, can't, you can't move any further. So have somebody help you with that. The other cost we had was we didn't have a wheelbarrow. And I've borrowed them before, but we're starting to do enough of this stuff. It seemed like it was a good time to get one. 75 bucks for that little wheelie cart that dumps on Amazon. We'll put a link in the description. That thing was worth its weight in cold this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, also, I made a, uh, a larger uh, sieve. That's something you definitely want to have so you can get the concrete. Because when you take it for recycling, you can't take anything but concrete. No dirt, no sand. It has to just be concrete. And so that was great to get the dirt and sand out of. And then there's, <laughs> then the last cost is your work crew, which was how much in yogurt? Friends, $24. $24 in frozen, in frozen yogurt. frozen yogurt with candy toppings. and But we got a whole His day's work out of it. was that for all It was for all Oh, it's like, <laughs> wow. That's a lot. <laughs> But Ben worked really hard. He definitely earned his frozen yogurt. Uh, you worked super hard. And uh, so it's really nice to have that done. I'm super excited about planning stuff. Now, uh, you might have wondered from the video, why did we tear up the concrete and then move over to the pad and then leave it there? And now we're gonna have to haul it again. And that was exactly what uh, <laughs> Annie asked me as well. Um, you know, we probably could have done it all in one haul, but here's the thing too. You can save a lot of money if you do things in stages. So we didn't have to rent a truck that was sitting there idle um, and then rent the jackhammer. And then, you know, basically our goal was just to break it up, move it out and get the, get the weed cloth down. Uh, next week, we're gonna rent the truck. And so we're gonna be running that truck basically the whole day. Um, getting pea gravel and getting the concrete taken out. So, you know, uh, a lot of times if you just think about how you want to lay out your project, like first we're gonna do this. Okay, let's just do that this weekend. And then next we're gonna do the next thing. And a lot of time week to week, we don't necessarily know exactly what we're gonna do. We kind of have an idea of what's gonna happen. Um, but you can save a lot of money by trying not to do too much. Just do the next thing you gotta do that you know is gonna save you some money. Um, I expect that next week when we rent the truck, it's probably gonna be around around 80 bucks for the truck for the whole day. Um, and that's part of a life hack too, is try not to bite off more than you can chew. We've done that absolutely. many, many times and then we're stressed and frustrated and we don't get anything else done that we need to get done. The kids are starting school this week. Yep. And so just to have it, the fact that we put it on the other part of the pad also was so that we could continue processing the part that we took out and if we needed to leave it for a few weeks it wasn't in the way of us cleaning up where we're going to put the garden no big deal we can just get rid of it at another time and honestly so. plans might change maybe next week we aren't going to be hauling it it could sit right. there all winter and it really wouldn't matter doesn't matter it's not that big of a deal the big thing is just think through what you're going to do because a lot of times too um, people are just like oh let's throw it in the truck and haul it off to the dump that's the fastest thing to do it's like it took me a little time to do the research to find out who could recycle it for us mm -hmm. and it turns out it was free so in the end it's going to be <laughs> cheaper to to recycle not to haul it but in the end it's going to be cheaper if you just take your time do one thing at a time and so anyway we're going to uh head back back down the hill here finish our hike for the day maybe go plant some flowers in the front garden yes. that'd be nice some some fall so flowers it looks nice not just all scraggly <laughs> Yeah. driving up to the house this fall but we're glad you joined us this week we really appreciate having you along make sure to subscribe to the channel uh click that bell so you get notified every week when we got another set of life hacks coming out for you next week you're not going to want to miss whatever we do hauling to the dump or maybe something else but for right now we're going to say see you next time <laughs>